Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. Dave is here. So basically, yeah, I just want to run through a few things that would help you with the project because some of you have been complaining. So I will just try to run through this in 15 to 20 minutes. So I have my Jupyter Notebook all set up with what I want to show you. So hopefully this will be very fast. So um, in the first cell, I'm importing string and random. These are libraries I'm going to use for some uh, manipulations here. So I'm on Jupyter Notebook. So if I run that cell, that is in. So the first thing I want to show you is data types here. Yeah? So the first one is string, string type. The second one is integer. The third one is Boolean. Boolean values are actually just true or false. Uh, list, uh, dictionaries, and a tuple. I'm sure you know what all these are by now from Marsh's video, but I just wanted to recap so that, uh, so that we will be on the same pace. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. So one thing I actually noticed here was some of you um, trying to print out the variable value and we are putting string quotes on the value. Let me show you something. Let me just do this. So let's let's say I do this. I bring that here. String type is Davis. And if I print string type, you see what Davis. Now, if I do print string type, what do you see? String type. So when if you put uh, string literals, you actually print what is between the string literals. But if you just put the variable name, you just you print what is inside the variable. Variables are just like containers that help you hold values. So I hope that clears up a bit. If you are printing variable, you do not need string literals around it. If you are printing strings, then you need literals around it. So print this, not this. Okay, moving on. For the task, uh, you guys have to generate um, a random five number. This is kind of done expo for you. This code here should be able to generate random five letters. Yep, so this is B-U-N-G. This is another one, this is another one. So basically, I'm setting the length to five and I'm doing random dot choice, string, ASCII, lowercase. So this is just basically your lowercase character. If I copy that and drop here, you see this is just A, B, C to Z in lowercase. So, and it's coming from this string library, which we imported up here. So random dot choice is a method to choose randomly from this. So I hope you actually understand what I'm saying. So we use this method to join whatever it is we get from here for each iteration of i in range of length. I know this looks a little bit complicated for now, but we'll get to four loops. But if you understand this, kudos. Okay, so moving on to string and list slicing. Yeah, some parts of your task has to do with string and list slicing. So um, let's say, let me comment this out for now. Fuck. Let me comment this out for now. Um, this is a list, HNG, that contains um, strings, learn, coda, Python, Go, PHP. So we have that list. And if I want to find out the index, there's something called um, list indexing. So this is basically index zero, index one, index two, index three, index four. I know you should know all this by now, but let's say I want to see the index of the first one. So I just do hng.index, where this is the list name, and this is a list method. So if I run that, it will tell me that um, learn is at index zero. If I change this to coda and run, you see coda is at index one. If I change that to PHP, you see that um, PHP is at index four. So this is basically, uh, individual indexes. But what if I want to get a range? So basically they start from zero, one, two, three, four, going forward, but going backward, they start from minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. It takes, um, takes a while to get used to it, but that's how it works. So let's say I want to get from here to here. So I will just do from zero to, I want these two, yeah? So I would get zero, one, two. So I have learner and coder. Something for you to notice, it picks index zero 
an index one, but it doesn't give me index two, yeah? But here I choose zero to two. So that's something for you to actually notice. It stops just before the last index you pick. So be very careful with that. So if I want to pick the last two now, I could start from minus two to the end. That's minus one, minus two. So give me minus two to the end. Yep, so I have go and PHP. So I hope that you can actually apply the same principle we did here. You can apply it to strings and it will work the same. So I want to show you something else about finding help in Python. So there's this help method. Yeah, help function basically. And let's say I want to find something about lists. So I just do help lists. So you have this output. This output gives you a list of methods that are applicable to lists. So first, and explanations here. First one is append. If you see something, forget about all these ones that have um, these underscores, you don't need them. The only ones you need are these ones without the underscores. So the first one is append. You use append to add an object to the end of the list. The second one is clear. You use um, clear to remove all items from the list. Let's say I do uh, hng dot append. So if I print hng now, if I print hng now, you should see Davis at the end. I appended Davis. Let's say, uh, let's try another method. Uh, Claire, I don't want to remove everything from it. Let's try count, hng dot count. Yep. Okay, I'm supposed to actually pass a method to it. So let's say hng dot coda count. That count how many occurrences of coda are in the list hng. Um, let's try pop hng dot pop. Pop actually removes. Let me show you pop here. Yeah, pop removes and returns item at the last index. So let's do that. So if you if we view HNG now, you would see that Davis is gone. Okay. So I hope you understand what how to find help using this. Uh, if we do the same for dictionary, you could see a list of methods that could help you manage dictionaries. You have clear, you move all items from the dictionary, you have copy, you have get. You have items. Just take your time to go through this for each of uh, for whichever um, construct you want to use. So um, that is that for lists. I'm trying to rush through this. Um, coming to dictionaries here. Yeah. So dictionaries are key value pairs. You know, if you notice something about lists, they're just the values. Yeah, and you access them using indexes of zero, one, two, three, four. Well, dictionaries are key value pairs. You give it specific keys that you want to use to access them. So let me show you. Okay, this is an example. This is an example. Another dictionary. So we have color. Color is the key. The value is brown. Uh, size is the key here. The value is large. And country is the key here. The value is Nigeria. But if you notice what I did here, yeah, we have um, the HNG list. And I'm putting that list inside this dictionary and I'm giving it a key of courses. So that's dictHNG. If I print out dictHNG, what do you have? You have courses and you have that list as the value. I hope this makes any sense to you. This is the key and these are the values. I know much more have explained all these things. So uh, I just wanted to run through them because I've been getting a lot of questions. Okay. So if I want to, coming back to this dictionary now, yeah, um, another dictionary, let's try some of those methods we got from up there. Another dictionary dot keys. So this gives me all the keys in the dictionary, which is color, size, and country. That's the same thing you have here. Another dictionary dot values. Now you have brown, large, and Nigeria. Hmm, would that make sense? So it, let's say you want to access a specific value. Yeah, um, you can do this.
Now, what's the value for the key color, brown? And that's the same thing we built here. So this is how you actually access the values using their keys. But for lists, you know, we created H and J up there, yeah? So if I do H and G zero, it's supposed to return the first one. Now that's it. You use um, the keys to return the values in dictionaries, but in lists to use what the indexes to return the values. I hope you understand what is going on here. So loops here. Yeah. Uh, what, what, what are loops? Loops are basically a construct for you to do something repetitively. Basically, that's what it is. So um, HNG, let me print out HNG for you. In HNG here, we have learn, we have CUDA, we have Python, we have Go and PHP. If I wanted to print these guys, yeah, one after the other, I could say print HNG zero, print HNG one, let me just copy this quickly. So you see, I'm doing this one after the other, and this doesn't make any sense. You shouldn't have to do this. But using a loop for item in HNG, print item. There you go. Simple, two lines. I've printed everything in that list. So I hope you kind of see the magic of loops. So this is a for loop. You also have while loops here. Yeah? So um, for while loops, you have to set a counter. And while counter less than length of HNG, print HNG counter. And counter is equal to counter plus one. Let's see what that does. Same thing. So you get the same thing that the for loop has given you. Personally, I prefer for loops, but in some cases, you just need to use a while loop in some cases. Okay, so um, let me explain what is going on here. You have a counter, your counter is at zero. Now, while counter less than length HNG, so that length function, you use it to get the length of a list. So let me show you what length HNG returns. It returns five. So while counter less than five, print HNG dot counter. Do you understand this? Okay, let me try to explain that. Uh, let's say counter is zero. So if I do HNG dot zero, you get len. If counter moves to one, you get CUDA. If counter moves to two, you get Python. So basically that's what this counter is. So while counter less than five, print HNG counter. Now, after the first iteration, you have to um, increase counter through this, um, this expression here. This expression is the same thing as this, but I just wanted to spell it out so that uh, you see what is actually going on. If you don't put this guy, counter never changes from zero to one and your loop goes on indefinitely. So please and please, every time you use a while loop, try to use the incremental to end it, if not. <laughs> so uh, I've shown you what a for loop is. I've shown you what a while loop is. I hope you understand. Now, I somebody asked me a question, if you could use a loop in a loop. Yes, you can use a loop in a loop. Let me run through an example here. So I have the first list, one, two, three, four, five. I have the second list, X, Y, laws, and the rest of that. So let me separate this. For item in list one, this is list one here. Let me separate it from the one so you see it properly. For item in list one, while, okay, I equals zero, while I less than length list two. I hope I explained what this already means. Let list two here should be, uh, let me show you. Eat. So while I less than eat, print list two I. This is the incremental. I talked about it here previously. So for each item in this, yeah, print this. 
I don't know how to, I don't know how to further break that down. So if I run this, you should see. Now, this is how it goes. For item in list one, we have one. That's our first item. I is equal to zero. Yeah. So while I is less than the length of list two, print list two dot I. This is this construct is basically what we did up here. But now I am trying to do it within another loop. So for the first one here, one you have X Y loss chief Baba Isale our boys and girls. Uh, for the second value here, you have the same thing. For the third value here, you have the same thing. And it goes on and on till you get the fifth value. So basically, I was using a loop in a loop, which you should do in your, in your task. I don't know how I could break this down any further, but that is, I hope you get the idea. Okay, we already talked about booleans. So another part of your task is the conditionals. Basically, conditionals are simple if statements. If this happens, this should happen. Else, this other thing should happen. So I have this. I created this variable and I put bar here. If i is equal to bold, print it is bold. Else, print it is not bold. So if I run this, you get it is not bold. But if I change this to bold, get he is bold. So if this construct returns true, do this. Else, do this. Remember I talked about Boolean values here. So if this construct returns true, do this. Else, do this. That is basically what it is. And these are, this is um, a comparison operator. I think most should have talked about comparison operators now. You notice I'm not using equal to. This is assignment operator. I'm using double equals to to make comparison. Is this the same as this? If yes, print this. So let's say for your task now, you're collecting a password. You're collecting a password here. Yeah? And you could check if the password is, is, is um, up to seven. So if it's not, return the message. If it's up to seven, move on to the other part of your work. So basically, you should try to, you know, draw out the full structure top to bottom before you actually start writing any code. That's the planning phase. Um, there was a video for software development lifecycle. So basically, you need to plan your, your steps for you to actually be able to write proper code. Um, last example here is the basic grading example. This is the simplest example you could ever see. So we have three grades greater than 70 A normal, the way you went to school. So grade is, if grade is 50, this is our conditions for checking the values. If grade is greater than or equal to 70, you made an A. Elif. Now, if you notice something here, we had just two conditions, if and else. But here now we have more than two conditions. So Elif comes in. So if grade is greater than 70, greater than or equal to, this is another comparison operator, you made an A. A leaf grade greater than or equal to 60 and grade less than or equal to 70. So if you are between 60 and 70, you made a B. If you are between 50 and less than 60, you made a C. Else you failed. I hope this is very clear because that's as clear as it can get. So if I run that, 50 is a C. If I put 70, mid and A. If I put 75, mid and A. If I put 65, mid and B. So I hope that is that. I hope that clears up some of your questions. These things are very, very easy. You could find other resources online. This, these things are basic. So I hope this helps you with your task. Thank you.